Hey everyone, my name is Benj Heish, and this is going to be a quick practical review of the Canon A1, also known as the AS1, and also known as the WP1 underwater point and shoot camera. on sort of a deep dive into just being slightly obsessed with compact point and shoot cameras. And one of the things that I was always a little bit worried about, I have a Contex T2, uh, a Fujifilm Class W, and a couple more of the kind of more premium versions of point and shoot cameras. And so I was always interested in something that I could bring around with me, not worry too much about it getting messed up. Um, and especially the idea that, you know, in more intense environments, in more um, areas that you just wouldn't want to bring a seven, eight hundred dollar camera to. Plus, I do a lot of things outdoors and in more rainy and conditions like that. And so I've always been really intrigued by this camera. My friend Ryan Muirhead has shot some incredible photos. And so it's always sort of been on my list. So around this time last year, KEH, where I buy um, a lot of my random kind of film supplies, they've always been really good to me. They're not a sponsor of this channel, uh, but if they would like to be, rock and roll, because I, I do actually really like that company. Uh, I picked this up in a bargain condition. Uh, for I think like $30. But overall, everything about this camera is kind of awesome. It's all plastic for sure, uh, but that means it's really, really light. Uh, one of the first things I did and do with all of the kind of random point and shoot cameras that I have that aren't as premium maybe is I bought a 10 pack of these little wrist straps on Amazon. So, you know, if you're doing anything crazy, um, you know, you just have this and let it flop around. The camera itself is obviously waterproof and that's the whole point of it. It looks like a toy, but it is an underwater camera. So I believe that it can go down to about, I don't know, five meters or something like that. So uh, about 15 feet. So just your general, like, I think this is probably made, you know, for a, someone that doesn't want to buy a disposable one if they're going to Hawaii to go, uh, you know, snorkeling or something like that. That's kind of what this thing I'm assuming is made for. But for me, I bought this in the winter, which is probably one of the reasons why it was on sale. And one of the first things I did was take it out and up to the mountains uh, when it was snowing. And I was actually really, really impressed with both just the use of the camera and its focus. I find that one of the things that's most annoying to me about point and shoot cameras in general is they, they just don't focus very well and I can't really, I don't know, trust it. But that being said, it did a great job. Uh, I took a bunch of photos of my then three-year-old snowboarding and you can see in a lot of these images that I'll show here that there is a lot of kind of haze and glare and stuff like that around the outside. And even right now, it's like pretty dirty. But the nice thing is like, it doesn't really matter if snow and water and that kind of stuff gets on here because it's just a fully sealed camera. I don't know if this is a typical issue of this camera or not, but one of the things that was kind of broken and I'm assuming one of the reasons why this camera was so inexpensive for me was this uh, battery door here was broken a little bit. So I can still open it and close it, but it was cracked right here at kind of one of the pivot points. And so I just super glued it back together and it hasn't been an issue for me. It's still all sealed. It has a tripod mount in case you would want to use that for any reason. But the nice thing too, is it just, there's not a lot of controls. It has a self timer if you really wanted to use that. And then it has just a full auto mode, which is what I used a lot. And then if you want to turn the flash on, you can, and then you can turn the flash off. And that's about it. You know, you don't get some of the premium things like exposure compensation or ISO settings or anything like that. But I've just put expired film in here, just kind of, I, sometimes I wasn't even shooting like full 36 exposure film. I was shooting some of the cheaper 24 exposure stuff. I find that it was just a fun camera to, to toss into a bag when I'm going to the lake. Like, I don't care. 
<laughs> if I drop it, if anything happens to it, because I bought it for $30. Um, and it just like, it has a bunch of scratches and things like that on it already. And so it just works really well. It has a 32 millimeter F 3.5 lens. So when close up, uh, you can get some shallow depth of field. Uh, the only other kind of issue is I was using it sort of as like an action camera in a way. So, you know, I took it up snowboarding uh, and then I took it out like behind a boat inner tubing and like taking photos of my kid while we were swimming and stuff like that, which is kind of, again, what I think this is for. It's kind of like the perfect little vacation camera of sorts. But the bummer about that is that I believe the shutter speed only goes up to one two fiftieth of a second. So even in the brightest of sunlight, if you have a lot of movement, you're gonna get motion blur, which whatever, I'm not really too worried about because again, it is an inexpensive camera. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this quick little review and sample images of the Canon SureShot A1, WP1, the AS1. I believe they were all the same camera, just kind of marketed to different areas and stuff like that. But if you are interested in more videos like this, I'm gonna put out a bunch of small reviews um, about a lot of the smaller cameras, literally, and then a bunch of the cameras that I own but maybe don't use as much. Um, and don't necessarily need as much depth to them. And if you are interested though, I do have a lot of reviews on some you know, more higher end cameras, some Leicas, Hasselblads, that kind of thing. Um, and I really do just love photography and I love talking gear. So subscribing would be great if you're into that kind of thing. So thanks so much and I will see you on the next one.